Welcome, everyone. We will uh, start the meeting in a couple minutes. We'll wait for another couple people to join. So good evening and welcome to this community meeting for the Hopper Avenue corridor fire recovery improvements between Coffee Lane and Highway 101. I'm Chris Balanisi, Capital Projects Engineering Assistant Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation of this meeting can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our translator, Roberto, will translate what I've just said, and then our host, Steve Brown, with the City of Santa Rosa, will explain how the meeting will work. Hey, buenas noches y bienvenidos a esta reunión comunitaria para el proyecto de mejora de la recuperación de incendios del eje vial Avenida Hopper entre el Coffee Lane y la autopista 101. Mi nombre es uh, Chris eh, Balanesi, ingeniero asistente de ingeniería de proyectos capitales del Ayuntamiento de Santa Rosa y quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos esta noche. La inter interpretación en vivo de esta reunión se puede escuchar en el canal de español. Pueden unirse al canal de español haciendo clic en el ícono de interpretación que representa un globo terráqueo en la barra inferior de su pantalla. Ustedes apretan ese icono y va a aparecer una ventanilla donde ustedes pueden elegir el canal de español. Si lo hacen en el, en el celular, en la barra inferior de su pantalla en el celular, pulse el botón More, More, ve el, el, de ahí seleccione el Language Interpretation y de ahí apriete Spanish y finalmente la palabra done y ya está listo, ya va a estar usted en eh, eh, comunicado para escuchar todos estos procedimientos en español. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Roberto. Give just a moment to move Roberto into the Spanish room. Okay. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project website envisionhopper.com following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Chris will open up the meeting for public questions and comment.
Thank you, Steve. Once again, I wanna thank all of you for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us as we discuss improved features and functionality along the Hopper Avenue corridor. We will start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and topics we plan to cover in the presentation. The project description, the time frame, the presentation, public comment, and the next steps. For tonight's discussion, we'll focus on the, road, the roadway corridor along Hopper Avenue from Coffee Lane to Highway 101 and your vision for its future use. We wanna hear from you, your ideas for improvements, your vision for the future of Hopper Avenue. Some options you may want to consider may include the types of bike lanes, lane reductions, beautification options, landscaping, and potential pedestrian enhancements. Our intent tonight is to gain input from you on how you envision Hopper Avenue. In addition to feedback provided tonight, an online survey will be available following this meeting to capture additional community input. A link to the survey will be placed on the project website, envisionhopper.com. Community input received tonight and through the online survey will be compiled and reviewed to draft into initial concept designs that we will review and discuss during the second community meeting in February. The location and date have not yet been determined for the second community meeting. However, we will send another postcard mailer and update the project website once the meeting details are confirmed. Now, I would like to introduce Brian Fletcher with Calendar Associates. Brian and his team will be listening intently to your comments as they will be developing and refining your vision for this vital community roadway. Brian will present various options for your consideration when envisioning the new Hopper Avenue corridor. Following his presentation, we will open up the meeting for comments and questions so we can hear your ideas for improvements and any concerns you may have for this project. As we move through the presentation, if there is a slide you would like to comment on or ask a question, please try to note the page number so we can return to that slide for reference. Brian, you now have the floor. Fantastic. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hello, my name is Brian Fletcher. And I'm a principal with Calendar Associates Landscape Architecture, or CALA for short. Um, a bit on myself, my parents have called Santa Rosa home now for over 25 years. So I'm really excited uh, to be a part of this project and looking forward to the process with all of you. So with that, can we bring up the PowerPoint presentation? Fantastic. Uh, next slide, please. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide an introduction to the project and to provide ample opportunities for you to provide feedback that will help guide the designs moving forward. For the meeting tonight, I'll provide an orientation to the site and our initial observations. I'll provide an overview of the timeline and opportunities for input. And I'll share images of potential improvements to hopefully generate comments that we can then utilize to generate responsive design options to present back to you at our next meeting. Next slide, please. So to begin, we have a few icebreaker live polling questions that we'd like you to answer. This will give us a little insight on who is on the call and how you use Hopper Avenue. Shelly, would you bring up this, the questions? Here are the questions and you can use your mouse to scroll through them and to answer, uh, use your mouse to click on the response. So we'd like to know how you currently use Hopper Avenue. As a business owner, as a resident, as a worker at a nearby business, a visitor or something else. The second question, we'd like to know where, where you reside, 
where in Santa Rosa do you currently live? Or if you're outside of Santa Rosa city limits, obviously would be the last one to click. And then finally, we want to understand how you currently use Hopper Avenue, how often you use Hopper Avenue. Do you use it multiple times a week, only a few times per month, or, or not very often? So we'll give just a moment to, for you to answer those questions and then we'll bring up the live uh, poll results. And Shelly, when you think there's been enough time and enough results, you can go ahead and bring up the live poll results. Thank you. We'll give everybody about 30 more seconds. Thank you, we're gonna end the poll. This is great, this is great feedback. Um, as you can see, the majority of people on the call tonight are residents uh, using, the, using Hopper as a resident. You can see the distribution of attendees by zip code. Vast majority at 95403. And then finally, it's good to see that we have uh, attendees that are using uh, the roadway multiple times per week, which um, will help uh, provide feedback on, on issues and opportunities that you see on site. So this is great to hear, great to see. So with that, we'll close the, the live poll and move forward. The next slide, please. So I just wanna give a bit more on the project background and goals. Funding for the project comes from the pg e settlement and it is, tended, it, it is intended to repair the damage to Hopper Avenue caused not only by the fire, but also the reconstruction efforts. It also allows for the community input to be an integral part of the design process. Project goals include working with the community and stakeholders to develop a collective vision, a vision that accommodates multiple modes of travel, including pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles, while at the same time, providing traffic calming measures to slow cars down without impacting emergency evacuation routes. We are also open to hearing your thoughts on other project goals that we may not have indicated. Next slide, please. There are also other projects currently happening in the area that our project will coordinate with. These include gas main improvements, additional road work, and roadway landscaping repair that is already underway. Next slide, please. The project limits, as Chris had mentioned, we are focusing on are from Coffee Lane on the left side of the page to Highway 101. There are generally three distinct segments with unique characteristics, including a residential zone, a commercial zone, and a transitional segment in between. Next slide, please. Now I'm going to walk you through some of our initial perceptions about the project and site. These graphics help us document existing conditions. 
This first section is the residential zone with renovated sound walls. It is characterized by a single lane of traffic in either direction with a consistent center turn lane. There are sidewalks on both sides along with consistent buffered bike lanes. Remaining street trees are sparse and many have been damaged by the fire. There is also a small public park and neighborhood sign at Coffee Lane. Next slide, please. So here is a couple pictures of that specific section. In the image on the left, you can see the configuration of the travel lanes, buffered bike lanes, and center turn lane. The image on the right shows the damaged sidewalks and planter strips where trees used to be. Next slide, please. This is the middle section where the roadway transitions from the residential zone to commercial zone. This is also the segment where the Piner Creek Trail is. Although trail visibility is limited and there is no immediate crosswalk to help with connectivity. There are also changes in sidewalk configuration and street tree patterns within this zone. Next slide, please. Here's a couple pictures of that specific section. The image on the left is at Piner Creek Trail and shows a very similar roadway configuration to that of the previous zone. However, you can see that the sidewalk configuration is different and remains inconsistent through this zone as shown on the right image. Both images do show a greater number of trees, but not necessarily at the back of curb. Next slide, please. This is the final section characterized by the commercial land uses and modified roadway configuration. You can see there are now two lanes of traffic in both directions and the buffered bike lane has been dropped on the south side of the street. There are consistent sidewalks and more street trees within this segment. Next slide, please. Lastly, here's a couple pictures of the commercial section. The image on the left is the new roadway configuration, again, with two lanes of traffic in either direction. And you can see the lack of the buffered bike lane on this side of the street. You can also see the sidewalks and greater number of street trees. The image on the right shows a wonderful mural on the back side of the storage facility. Next slide, please. So this slide illustrates the project timeline and process that we will be going through. As you can see, we are in the upper left-hand corner of this slide, the we are here. And we're at the very, very beginning of the process. We will use the feedback we received tonight and the surveys that follow to develop preliminary design alternatives, which we'll present at the next community open house in February. We will use input received at that meeting to develop a preferred alternative. If we did not achieve general consensus on the alternatives, we will present the preferred alternative at a final community open house in May. 
At that point, we hope to have built consensus and can conclude phase one of the process. In the summer, we hope to begin phase two, which will include a more detailed design and construction of the project, which is estimated to be complete in the fall of 2025. Next slide, please. For the next few slides, we wanna show images of potential improvements that could happen along the corridor. First, beginning with pedestrian circulation improvements, these include wider sidewalks, accessible curb ramps, and increased visibility of the crosswalks. Next slide, please. For bicycle infrastructure, there are options to continue or enhance the existing buffered bike lanes. Protected bike lanes include a physical barrier between cars and bikes, which could be a planter strip as shown, a vertical curb, or other element. Next slide, please. The last category of enhancements is street beautification. Median islands can provide pedestrian safety, as in the first image, as well as opportunities for landscaping, as shown in the third image. The second image shows street trees, which also can help with traffic calming and pedestrian comfort. Finally, gateway signs and decorative pavements also can enhance neighborhood identity if that is something that the community desires. Next slide, please. The next few slides show before and after project images to give you an idea of how these improvements could be applied to an actual project. This is a project in Campbell that had an extremely wide residential roadway with only a single lane of traffic in either direction. This neighborhood really struggled with speeding traffic and pedestrian safety. Next slide. This slide shows the after image where we were able to reduce the amount of roadway asphalt. We reduce the traveling widths to standard dimensions, retained parking, while also adding bike lanes, street trees, and large planting strips. These planting strips also work to treat 100% of the stormwater leaving the roadway. Next slide, please. The second project we wanted to show you was a commercial district in Burlingame. Existing conditions included two lanes of traffic in either direction with a center turn lane. The roadway also lacked bike lanes, street trees, pedestrian lighting, and bus, and bus stops were existing but subpar. Next slide, please. This image shows proposed improvements, including reducing the travel lanes from two lanes in either direction to one lane because of the low traffic, uh, traffic volumes on the street, retaining the center turn lane, but providing pedestrian refuge islands 
and landscape medians where possible. Buffered bike lanes were added along with enhanced bus stops. Finally, a consistent planter strip provides a buffer to the wider sidewalks and creates space for consistent street trees and additional lighting. This image is also helpful for you to better understand the types of graphics that we are going to be presenting as we develop the preliminary concepts to help you understand the proposals and better react to them. Next slide, please. So now that we have shown you some potential improvements, we wanted to do one more final quick poll. Shelly, if you could bring that up. Based upon what you heard, which, which aspect of the Hopper Avenue corridor would you like to see improved the most? I'll give you a couple minutes to answer. And Shelly, whenever you think is appropriate, you can bring up the results. Thank you. We still have a couple people working on the survey. I'll give me a couple more seconds. Thank you. We'll end the poll. Great. This is great. So from top beautification to second pedestrian sidewalks, and then it looks like we're about evenly split between vehicular and bicycle lanes. So I really appreciate the input and, and uh, can't wait to see the feedback tonight from you as well as our survey. So with that, that concludes my presentation. I'll now turn the meeting back over to Chris. Thank you, Brian. At this time, we would like to hear from you, our community. So we'll now move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. However, before we begin, I will ask Steve to review how you can participate by asking live questions and comments. All right, thank you, Chris. Once Chris calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted, so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted, so our panelists may respond to your question. Steve? <clears throat> Steve, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you, Chris. Um, again, if you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called on. And then please allow us a moment to confirm the translator is ready. Please remember to speak slowly so our translation team can relay your question. Again, anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand using the Zoom raise hand feature. If you're calling in, please dial star nine to raise your hand. The first person in the queue is uh, Jeff Krepke. Uh, Jeff, your microphone has been unmuted. 
You may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Jeff Okrepke. Uh, my questions um, or my comments real quick. Um, obviously, uh, beautification is very important to everybody, but as relates to um, traffic calming, um, I've heard before, and I don't know if this is a question for a planner or a traffic engineer or a landscape architect, but I've heard that with medians and street trees, there's uh, a, an ability that, an unconscious ability that slows down traffic with those sorts of things. Is that sort of, is that a possibility? Because I know a lot of people are concerned about Hopper Avenue basically being a straightaway and people flying through there. I'm just wondering if by doing things like, you know, protected bike lanes, street trees, medians, if traffic will naturally calm itself. Thank you, Jeff. So, my understanding of your question is that you're asking if uh, some of these elements will will calm traffic uh, just by their installation. And um, I'm wondering if if Rob might have a good, if Rob Sprinkle might have a good uh, response to that question. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Um, hi, Jeff. Yes, absolutely. That is um, a technique that we use throughout the city to help reduce speeds, uh, narrowing the traffic lanes, um, constricting them somewhat, having uh, shade canopies that help make kind of a tunnel effect um, with trees and medians. Those all do help um, subconsciously uh, people drive slower through, through those more constricted areas than when it's a wide open street like Hopper is today. Thank I you very maybe, much. I can maybe add just a little bit. If we could go to slide number 18. Um, this was the exact reason why we wanted to show this project um, down in Campbell. Um, because existing conditions had a very wide open, large area of asphalt that was contributing to the speeding problem in, in that there was you know, a straight shot with no obstructions. Um, so what you want to do is, is reduce the perceived width of the asphalt, obviously narrowing the lanes only to standard practices, um, adding bike lanes and buffer, even if it's just striping, can help reduce the perceived width of the travel lane and slow traffic. And then you can see we've added the street trees within the parking lane, and that you want to have your street trees as close to the travel lane as possible to get the most impact of not only the visible vertical trunk that helps reduce the perception of the wide roadway, but also the tree canopy that helps as well. Thank you very much. Uh, with that information, I think my, my official comment would be using the beautification measures as you described to help calm the traffic. Um, while also using, you know, the decorative pavement and the, the high visibility crosswalks and the stuff like that um, to just make it more appealing and safer at the same time would be my highest priority. Thank you, Jeff. Do we have another raised hand? We do. The next person in our queue is Alexa Forrester. Alexa, your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, thanks so much. My name is Alexa Forrester. And first off, I'll start by congratulating Jeff Okrepke and his recent win um, to the city council. Um, and I also want to echo part of what he said, which was about trying to make many of these features work together. So having beautification efforts be part of traffic calming. Um, I teach at the junior college and we recently painted a mural in, on a street right in front of my, where, my building and cars have gone much slower through there just based on my own perceptions since we painted that mural. Um, and so, especially like at intersections in particular, I, I really liked that one picture you had of this, the pavement. I was also wondering if some of the pavement that was used for that could include 
Um, like I know there are cooling paints and stuff so that on really hot days, it helps keep the temperature down. I don't know if that could be a very big effect, but especially for any bicyclists or pedestrians using um, the infrastructure on really hot days, um, having it be sort of a little, you know, in addition to street trees. Um, a couple other things I, I said I wanted to mention, um, I primarily travel either as a pedestrian, a bus user, or a cyclist. Um, and so all of those infrastructure improvements are very attractive to me. I did want to point out that if you make the sidewalks wider with really nice ADA ramps, which I do believe you should do, but you don't include um, safe feeling bike lanes, you will have the bicyclists that came out of the buffered lane um, to into the portion where there is no bike lane, you will have them just up on the sidewalk. And I think that's a non-ideal solution, you know, for both the pedestrians and the cyclists, it increases the risk. So I would urge uh, protected, ideally, um, or at least buffered bike lanes along the whole stretch, if it's compatible with traffic flow patterns. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. So I think paint, paint used for cooling the asphalt can definitely be something we look into. Um, as we know, uh, different colors do radiate heat differently. So um, that's definitely something if we move towards that direction of the decorative pavement. And uh, bicycles on the sidewalk are something we definitely don't want. So. Um, we do intend to to create um, either a similar bike lane to what we have now or uh, something improved. Okay. Do, we, do we have another raise hand? We do. The next person in the queue is Kelly. Kelly, your microphone has been unmuted. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Yeah, we, we have uh, a couple people here. So we have a couple questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the amount of money that is gonna be spent on this project? The second question is the property um, just past the um, storage area that has not been widened. Is that a, a planned widening of that? Um, area. Uh, it's just uh, east of the Hopper Lane. The uh, I think there should be a medium strip down the middle of Hopper there. Um, but don't use bark, please. <laughs> and, uh, and the way Hopper is now is you have the the old parking area that it you can't park on. So that's just a wasted area. Then you got the bike lane and then the street. Um, so if we widen the, the, the sidewalk, we're gonna take that part out of the, um, of the road. Is that correct? And um, do you have any other questions? Yeah, I'm, I'm also on this one. Uh, some of those uh, per projects you have uh, are pretty ambitious. Is there enough money that we have available to do that uh, extensive landscaping. <clears throat> We're done with our questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kelly. So this project, we're, we are still scoping what we are going to be implementing. So, um, it's kind of hard to say what amount of money is going to be spent on the project at this point in time, but uh, the project was allocated approximately $6 million from the PG&E uh, settlement. So once we conduct our community engagement meetings and we fine tune our project scope, we will have a better understanding of how much we're, um, how much it's going to cost. Um, that 
also uh, kind of correlates with the with the last question having to do with the landscaping. So moving down the question list, I I don't think that there was any intent on widening uh, Hopper at this point in time. I think it was the intent was to maintain the existing road width. A, there was the question about eliminating the parking to uh, widen the sidewalk um, based on based on the existing sidewalk width and the uh, landscaped uh, areas in, within the sidewalk, uh, there appears to be some space to where we wouldn't need to push it out any further, but um, this is still um, in the works. Okay, very good. Our next person in the queue is Mike. Mike, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Yeah, thank you. This is Mike. Uh, I live in the Coffee Park area like many of us do. And I was curious as to why we're stopping at Coffee and not going all the way to Barnes. And I realized that the, the context and the, and the, the, the road changes to purely residential, but there's significant damage to the roadway from the fire, as well as some, there was some, uh, um, some things that would help delineate the area well, whether it's uh, like the uh, 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 marker of the location, like that Washington thing sign you had, for example, certainly over at Barnes, there could be something like that as well. It's just sort of looking at the whole area and not just dropping dead at coffee is what I was thinking. And on, on traffic calming, I, I saw used, uh, um, in essence, a rumble strip, but it was very pretty because it uses some small cobblestones which you know are, are easy to walk on. It's not like trying to walk on rocks or something. But if, if somebody drives over it with any speed at all, it, it's not pleasant, but it's not unsafe at least. And just, just an idea, I wanted to toss out there on that. That's all. Thank you, Mike. The, the rumble strip is a, is a, a good suggestion and um, from emails I've received from uh, other residents in the area, um, that that's definitely something that um, can be considered. Um, in terms, Chris, this is Rob, real quick. I just want to jump yeah. in on that. Um, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. so our experience with rumble strips in the past, and specifically from resident com uh, comments, is that they're extremely noisy. Um, so every time we've put them in throughout the city. Um, we've actually had to take them out within a few days of the installation. So although they are a, um, they, they can be a deterrent for people to help slow them down, it's also um, have been shown to be extremely annoying to the residents. So we've, we've held back on installing those if, as traffic calming uh, measures. And then I did wanna also circle back to something that Kelly mentioned. Um, in the previous caller about the narrow section of roadway, I believe it was between Banyan and Airway um, where they're discussing whether that segment would be widened. And that, that's right near Pioneer Creek Trail, I believe. And, and that is up for um, discussion. So it, it could be a potential that that is widened or it could be potential that that remains a constriction and, and, and is used as a point to um, trigger in people that you're moving from a more commercial area transitioning to a residential area so that's definitely up for discussion and we'd love to hear the public's comments on that thanks and if i could just add to design elements i think you know we're going to take all your input tonight but we're going to work with uh, take our experience of, of projects and what's worked and what hasn't combined it with the city's experience on projects on elements that work and don't work and then bring you back some proposals so 
um, you know, rumble strips may not be the solution, but, but I've got a few ideas that I would love to talk to the city about other things that could also possibly help and, and also want to learn from city staff on, on what other elements have worked within the city to achieve a similar response of slowing traffic as, as you've indicated, but without the accompanying noise. Okay, the next person in the queue is Terry Jimenez. Terry, your microphone has been unmuted and you may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, so we work with um, security public storage that uh, the storage facility on Hopper and we just wanted to make a comment here that if we put a median inside of the business section on Hopper that we think that it would be um, kind of slowing down the traffic as it would make it harder for trucks to enter businesses in the area. That's it. Thank you, Terry. If I could just answer, make a response to that one. I think that's, you know, one thing that one reason why we kind of broke this up into different segments is that each segment has a unique characteristic, unique land uses and, and specific challenges associated with it. So we're also going to be evaluating the design solutions within each one of those. And it, there's, there's not gonna be a one size fits all solution from you know, one side of, of the project limits to the other side of the project limit. So you know, you're absolutely right, maybe a median is appropriate in one area, maybe it's not in the, in the other areas. So we certainly will be looking at turning movements um, and, and uh, all things associated with, with traffic uh, flow. Okay, great. The next person in our queue is Lisa Mast. Lisa, your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, um, Lisa Mast, and I'm I'm a resident of Coffee Park. And um, just for clarification, you might have announced this initially, but I'm just wondering um, what the breakdown was from the responses you had. I'm wondering how many people participating in this call are um, are residents. If I remember the right, I did not see a single person that was outside of city limits. They were all within the zip codes identified. Oh, and I'm sorry. Um, I, I think more specifically, I guess it, it wasn't broken down to um, who might be residents of the coffee park area itself. Okay, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, staff, but this will, this will, the video of this will be posted to the website, which will also include those, uh, res those poll responses after okay. this. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, the poll, the poll uh, indicated by zip code where the, um, the attendees were from. So that will narrow that for a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next person in our queue is Deborah Bratberg. Deborah, your mic has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Hi, yes, my name is Debbie Bratberg and I'm a resident of Coffee Park and I have two, um, one comment and one question. My first is a comment about the uh, traffic calming, just to make note that that area, not only is just traffic in general can be a concern, specifically street racing has, has been occurring uh, on that particular stretch. And I just happened to look at a, something that popped in while I was waiting the city just posted where street racing, they're talking about not necessarily in Hopper, but one that just occurred, speeds of 100 miles per hour 
um, when this happens, it's usually in the early hours. This one was at 1245. I don't know if there's any way to um, help with, with you know, not choosing to do street racing down um, Hopper. And then my question is regarding the beautification. So I live on a house that is near the park. I look into the park and um, so sad to me that we had a beautiful sod lawn and it has significantly deteriorated because the land, the uh, drip and irrigation system was either improperly installed or not watered um, sufficiently. So my question is in regards to the beautification, will that come with uh, irrigation and maintenance as part of the budget? I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. So from the from your question, will irrigation be included with any prospective uh, landscaping? Um, Brian, would you like to <laughs> see yeah. it on your head? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Yes, um, water maintenance are uh, incredibly um, large topics in every single project that we work on um, these days. So right now, I'm just looking to get input on what features people want. So not sure yet whether there's going to be a landscape median or anything. I'm just open to feedback. If, if there are landscape areas, it is important that we include uh, irrigation as part of that and make that irrigation as low maintenance and as water, uh, to use as little water as possible um, for that. So it's carefully selecting the plant materials um, and then carefully designing the irrigation system. So although I can't respond to what's going on with the coffee park itself, um, I certainly can respond to any future, any landscaping that we propose as part of this must have some form of irrigation. Okay. The next person in our queue is Dave S. Dave, your mic has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you choose and then ask your question or make your comment. My question for Steve or for Rob would be, um, what's the 85th percentile speeds up and down Hopper? Um, probably two different sections, the commercial area and then the residential area. Um, my comments would be, um, I would not put a median island down the street at all. Um, the city can't maintain the existing islands they already have, so they become just big weed patches, and I think they look absolutely terrible. Um, I don't think this project is going to be able to afford a separated set of bike lanes. Um, I think the ADA ramps are a given pro given as part of the project due to the amount of uh, asphalt work that's going to have to be done on the street to get it up to uh, some kind of reasonable driving surface. Um, I'm really hoping that we don't, or the city does not put in a mid-block crosswalk at the Colgan Creek Trail or the Coffee Creek um, crossing there. Um, I don't think the Creek Trail actually goes anywhere to the north. I think it dies and goes underground before it actually gets to another street. Um, and south, I don't actually know where that would come out either. Um, so I don't see a lot of people using that. And I think that's it. Thanks, Dave. Would uh, Rob, would you be willing to answer Dave's questions about the about the roads? Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. 
So the 85th percentile on um, Hopper from it's the segments from Copy to Cleveland is what we surveyed. Uh, we did that in 2020, and it came to 37.3, which allowed us to lower the speed limit, which was previously 40 miles an hour, to the current posted 35 miles an hour on that segment. Did you want me to address any of the other comments, Chris? Or Brian, were you going to take those? I'm sorry. I think those were just comments. I don't know if there were, I didn't notice any other questions in there. So we're writing feverishly the comments and, and um, going to be including it as we move forward in the designs. Okay, the next person in the queue is Annie Barber. Annie, your microphone's been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Yes, my name's Annie Barber. Um, I'm a resident of Coffee Park. And I would, <clears throat> so I'd like to address the creek area first. I totally agree that by opening that up and making that a wider area that that would just make it more of a speedway down Hopper. Um, my number one priority really is as much as it would be wonderful <clears throat> to make it look like you're entering Disneyland. I think the reality is that we want a low maintenance area that's safe for our children and our residents to walk in. So the sidewalks need to be improved upon. We have disabled people who I see going up and down Hopper Avenue on those sidewalks and it's scary with the zigzagging. Um, if we could bring it back to, to a, a good sidewalk, disability um, ramps with um, a clear, concise bike lane and some trees. I think that would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Great feedback. Okay, the next, uh, the next uh, people in our, our queue are Doug and Becky. Uh, uh, Salady, uh, Doug and Becky, your microphone has been unmuted and um, you can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Sorry, Doug and Becky, uh, it appears that you're still muted. If you'd like to unmute and ask your question. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, I'm Doug Salady, and being our backyard is on Hopper, um, I would like to see, and, and because of the noise and the speed in which people are traveling, I'd like to see a stop sign and a crosswalk, um, possibly put in at um, Skyview, or Crestview, probably Skyview would be the better spot, um, just to allow people, it, it, depending on the time of day, it's very difficult to get out of the of the housing track, and it's a more it's a safety kind of a thing. Um, anyway, that that's all I really have to say. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, the next person in our queue is Steve uh, Raman. Uh, Steve, your mic has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Great. Uh, this is Steve Rom. Um, I'm a resident of Coffee Park. Um, I'll just run through a lot of the things that people said I agree with. Uh, I'll just run through my list. Sorry if it sounds long. So uh, first one, I'll say uh, just something small on slide 11. You have a um, you show a bus stop in Santa Rosa. Not all bus stops are equal. Um, we used to have a bus stop on the corner of Coffee and Airway or Hopper and Airway at a bench, a garbage can. Now it's now the bus stop's been moved. There's no bench. Ideally, that that bus stop you show there that's on the corner of Airway and Hopper. My office is right here. Uh, that's ideally would be great to have a bus stop down there because people are now walking all the way to that bus stop. 
Um, so that was that was my one comment there. Straightening all the sidewalks and not having them uh, go back and forth like they are now uh, would be a big plus. Um, there's some existing landscaping. One of the Hill homeowners has put on their side or on their property on the wall. Um, seeing that this project wouldn't happen for three years. I mean, they're investing money and time in that landscaping. I'm hoping that there's some communication with them to let them know that maybe that landscape's not going to be there or something's going to happen there. Um, also, the uh, uh, as far as the bridge at Hopper, that might be a good way to choke down the traffic, but I feel like it would be nice if that sidewalk continued um, on the north side at the Coffee Creek. Um, sidewalks, there's not, or crosswalks, there's not a crosswalk between Airway and Coffee Lane. That's a long way to go for safety. There needs to be some sort of crosswalk uh, that's, uh, at, you know, there's a lot of elderly people that walk down that street and they, they try to cross that street. It gets crazy. Um, and then as far as the maintenance during our recovery, we met with the city quite a bit and there was a, always a talk of the ongoing maintenance and what that, this development would look like. And I'm hoping that um, this team is working with Center of the Parks to make sure that whatever we all talk about are not big dreams, but actually can be maintained. Um, whether it's tree wells and just trees or some sort of maintenance. And that's all I got for right now. Thank you, Steve. Chris, if you don't mind, I'd like to just ask a clarification question. Um, Steve, I'm not sure I perfectly understood your first comment about the bus stop shown on slide 11. It's currently shown existing at Airway Drive. Correct. There used to be a bus stop on the corner of Airway, I'm sorry, Hopper and Coffee Lane on the south side of Coffee Lane. Um, and now it's been moved down to on Coffee Lane in front of the residences that are live on Coffee Lane. And it's just a sign. It used to have a, a bench and people would use it regularly. Now because that bus stop's been moved and it's inadequate to sit there, especially like today in the rain or yesterday in the rain, people don't use that bus stop. So now they're forced to walk all the way up to the bus stop you have in that picture on the corner of Airway and Hopper. And it would be good to get that bus stop back and actually have a bench back. Okay, so there's two points there, looking to move it back onto Hopper and looking to ensure the bus stop has similar enhancements, shelter, bench, sign, similar to what was at Airway. Did I hear that correctly? Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Steve. Thanks. Okay, the next person in our queue is Todd Anderson. Todd, your mic has been unmuted. Um, if you'd like to state your name for the record and then ask your question or make your comment, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Yeah, my name is Todd Anderson. I manage the Best Western on um, Hopper there. I just had a couple comments. One, um, it's extremely difficult to make a left turn out of any of the businesses on either side of the street, um, especially during peak traffic. Um, the other comment I had was, I don't understand why there's the turn lane between Banyan and Crestview, as you can't make any turns. It's a solid fence. Um, I think we put a, some sort of a median or something in there. I think that would be a good idea. And then the other thing is, I think the left turn lane from Hopper onto Coffee needs to be extended. Um, I mean, everyone just goes in the center median anyways, but I mean, if it was a legitimate left turn lane, I think that would be a good idea. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Okay, the next person in our queue is Chris Shear. Chris, your microphone has been unmuted. 
You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Yes, my name is Chris Shear. I live in Coffee Park. Um, first, three things. First, I would like to echo what Steve said earlier um, to see decent bus stops and sheltered bus stops complete with trash cans so that whatever we do, um, it looks nice and it promotes using public transportation to and from this area. Um, Second, recently there was some tree and bush removal done on Hopper Avenue in the first zone that you described. Didn't seem to make a lot of sense what was decided to be removed and what was decided to be left. Some of the crepe myrtles that looked like they had potential were removed and others that look like they're struggling a little, although they did survive the fire. Um, remain with orange webbing around them. If it's going to take till 2025 to do this work, I'm just kind of wondering why you removed some of the things that were growing there. They could have stayed there for a year. Now we just have dirt and we just got the weeds under control because you removed them all, um, but they're going to come back with all this rain. So I hope there's a plan there for the next three years. And then third, um, because you said all the way to 101, I'm gonna include these areas when we talk about safety. These uncontrolled left turns on and off hopper. Um, the Starbucks and company businesses, I was amazed when those went in and they allow left turns out of those driveways people are coming off the freeway it's just a question of time until somebody gets creamed there and now we've added dutch brothers on the north part of hopper and so you have two like businesses with very acute service cycles in the day and the cars are like coming at each other on hopper so that's probably outside the scope of i think it was Brian who's with the landscaping firm and design firm, but these traffic issues, if you're looking at traffic into our area and stuff, we also need to look at that part um, there with that freeway on and off ramp because it gets really hairy there. That's the end of my comment. Thank you, Chris. Um, Referring to the uh, tree and brush removal, um, some, some remains, some was removed. Um, we currently have a landscape project going on right now that is um, working to rehabilitate some of the fire damage landscaping, um, some in Coffee Park, I think some in Fountain Grove. Um, I Brian, are you um, are you aware of um, of that project at all? I, I, yes, I better be aware of it because we also are working on that project. Um, so I, I can answer a little bit about that. When when we evaluated those trees, when we had our arborist block uh, the entire properties that we were looking at, uh, this was uh, probably about two years ago. Um, and made the decisions on which had damage, which were um, needing to be removed. Um, now two years have kind of passed. I think we've had some sucker growth um, that certainly was not there two years ago. Um, so we'll have to evaluate the remaining trees as part of this project and, and see what what should additionally be removed or continue to uh, remain. Um, a lot of times a tree may look good. And this has been my experience of working with arborists. The tree may look good, but there is some structural damage that has been occur that has occurred that although it's not an immediate uh, safety issue can become a safety issue in the future. So 
Uh, I don't remember each tree and the specifics on each one, but that could be a, a possibility. Finally, the one thing I'll, I'll just say is that crepe myrtles, although they're beautiful, um, when we're looking at trees that will provide a canopy for the roadway and look for traffic calming, I would be looking for trees that have a much larger canopy than a, than a crepe myrtle. Uh, we typically would use the crepe myrtles more for accent opportunities, gateways and, and such. So Chris, I, I, hope that, I, I hope that answered your question a bit. I think that was great. Thanks, Brian. Okay, the next person in the queue is Tracy Kexcometti. Tracy, your microphone has been unmuted and you may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Good evening, my name is Tracy Kexcometti. Take that one off. Sorry, we have two things going on here. We have feedback, you have to turn it off. There, thank you. Um, sorry about that. I, one of the things that is going on about the slowing down the traffic, um, I think I'm gonna get some eyes that will roll, but has anybody thought about a roundabout? Um, that's people down and there's some beautification that's, a, that's assigned with that. Also, I agree with the comment about there's being no crosswalks from airway all the way to coffee, dangerous. Um, so something at Skyview probably, and I'm sorry, I do live in Coffee Park as well. In fact, I live on Skyview. Um, but it is Skyview and Crestview are hard to get in and out of, and there has been a lot of wrecks. So crosswalk, stop sign, roundabout, kind of thinking something like that. Um, it would also probably deter, well, I don't know, a sideshow, I don't know. Maybe they would just go round and round, I don't know. Um, uh, that's about all I have to say about that, just crosswalks and a stop sign or roundabout or, or, or light, uh, street lights. And that's it. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Rob, do you have any feedback? I think roundabout is a possibility to put on the table. I don't think that's something that we would not look at um, if that's something that the neighborhood would, would like us to evaluate. Thanks, Rob. Okay, the next, uh, next person in the queue is Good. Good, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make a comment. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm, the bicycle lanes have been currently painted into copper. Um, while they were a good idea, I still see people riding their bicycles on the sidewalk. So I like the idea of having a more protected bicycle lane where the bicyclists would then use the bike lane versus the sidewalk. And then, um, I noticed all of the images that have been taken are taken during the daytime. I'm curious about if any images have been taken at night and the inclusion of nighttime safety along this corridor. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just name you as good. Um, good. Um, well, I appreciate that comment. Yes, all the images right now are are during the daytime. Um, I will I will absolutely um, get out there at at night so I can um, certainly appreciate that before we prepare the concepts. Okay, Chris. At this point, I see no more hands raised in the queue. Oh, pardon, a couple of them shut up. Um, so the next person in our queue is Tom Karbowski. 
Tom, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Yes, uh, I'm Tom Kowalski and my wife and I live on Starview Court in Coffee Park. And I had previously emailed Chris about some uh, issues that I had. Uh, and one of them is the, which is a kind of a general thing for all Santa Rosa, is the automobiles that make so much noise because their catalytic converter are removed. Uh, we've lived here for 30, 40 years, and it's been the, just the last few years that we've heard this, and you hear it all over. It's horrible. Um, and I don't know what can be done about it, but it, it's it, extremely irritating. Uh, it's not limited to our area, of course. Uh, the other thing that I have brought up is Starview Court. Uh, west of that is, is coffee, coffee Lane, and we have speed speeders going up and down that thing all 24 hours, um, traveling, you know, 40, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour at the worst. And I was suggesting speed bumps, if they could be put in on Coffee Lane. And the only other comment I'll make is, uh, which has been talked about, where the uh, road at... Uh, Henry and Hopper, mm -hmm. in front of the... At Airway Drive and uh, where it narrows down. In front of the storage unit. Yeah, in front of the storage unit. What happens is it, cars coming up on the right side of going you, west. try to, yeah, going west, try to pass you uh, and that's kind of like a race. But uh, in Fountain Grove, I know it, uh, where you get off to go by Centennial Way, they've had some striped lines painted there that it makes it appear like uh, the road it narrows and, and people don't go, in the lane. Yeah, don't go in that lane. So I'm just thinking something like that could be done. And that's pretty much all I have. Thanks, Tom. <clears throat> Rob, do you uh, do you have any comment regarding um, uh, speed bumps? I do. Thanks, Chris. Um, unfortunately, we do not install speed bumps on um, streets, arterial streets, and our, especially arterial streets that have bus routes. Um, bus routes and speed humps don't typically go well together um, with the buses trying to, to navigate those. So unfortunately on coffee lane that's, and on hopper, um, those would not be traffic calming measures that we would install. Okay, the, uh, the next person in the queue is Kelly Moore. Kelly, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Uh, Kelly, your, your microphone is unmuted. You could make your comment if you wish. Okay, Kelly, we'll uh, uh, raise your hand again if you wish to make a comment. We'll go ahead and move on to the, the next person in the queue. Um, the next person in the queue is Kurt Nichols. Kurt, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Having difficulty unmuting, sorry. Yeah, this is Kurt Nichols, another Coffee Park resident. Um, I just wanna say I'm, I'm really excited about this project. Um, uh, ever since um, all the, uh, uh, you know, the, the folks that 
put a lot of effort. I, I don't I don't know everybody I know that that involved in that, but it was to get the walls done, um, redone along Hopper. Um, that was awesome. And then my next thought was, well, now what? You know, we've got this big expansive asphalt, and hopefully um, that can be improved. So it's really exciting to see this this project moving forward. So I'd like to um, second some of the other um, comments that have been made and and add my uh, vision uh, to the mix, and that would be to have a uh, to really transform Hopper Avenue into a tree-lined boulevard. Um, you know, not just street trees. You know, on the sides, perhaps in the median, as has been discussed. There's uh, different situations. I think uh, one comment that was made that there's a section where there's center left turn lane that there's no opportunities to turn left, so that there might be some some opportunity for trees there, but uh, just leave it to the designers to uh, kind of uh, see what might be done to uh, run with that tree-lined uh, boulevard um, idea. And I think that would go toward uh, some of the other comments I know Rob made earlier about traffic and others about traffic calming and, and uh, how uh, getting kind of a canopy over that street would, would help with that. I think it would also help with a number of other things and would just be a, a, a fabulous uh, new entry to our, our revitalized uh, or renewed neighborhood. So. Um, excited about the project and thanks again for the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Kurt. Okay, um, Kelly Moore is uh, back in the queue. So Kelly, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose uh, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi there, can you hear me this time? I can. Perfect, <laughs> sorry about that. This is Kelly Moore, I'm a resident of Coffee Park and I apologize, I missed the first half of the presentation so this may have already been covered. But I wanted to appreciate the fact that everyone is interested in lowering speeds on Hopper Avenue but I also wanted to make sure we're aware of that being a major evacuation route in the event we have another fire. Um, with the center medians um, or possibly putting in roundabouts and things like that, you know, if we had to use that avenue as a major evacuation, we need to have, you know, a lot of vehicles access it at one time. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Hopefully they're keeping that in mind. Um, my next comment would be, I do like the idea of a crosswalk somewhere between coffee and airway. Um, and maybe they can install one of those flashing lights um, with a button that can be pressed for people to alert the cars that someone's in the crosswalk. Um, I think that that is a good idea, um, especially at night on that road. And then the other comment was just um, for nighttime lighting along the sidewalks. I think um, having that be a well-lit area would look really nice. And that was it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. The uh, evacuation route comment was uh, was really great. We we have been talking about this. Okay, Chris. Um, we there are no more hands raised at this point. Okay, so with no further questions, I would like to express my appreciation and thank the members of the public, the panelists, interpreter, and hosts for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and provide your input on the Hopper Avenue Fire Cor Corridor Fire Recovery Improvements Project. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to your participation tonight, we would also like you to visit the project website listed on the screen and take our online survey. We appreciate, we appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting, and we hope you can join us again in February when we will review and discuss improvement concept designs based on your feedback. We will send another postcard mailer 
with the meeting date and location once it's confirmed. Updates will be posted on the project website, envisionhopper.com. On the website, you can also subscribe to receive email updates on this project. Thank you again for participating tonight and good night. Um, just a moment, Chris. I'm so sorry. I'm, I had a hard time accessing that screen and it's, uh, it's at the end of here. So let me get a moment to go to the correct screen where we have those QR codes and that access information. There we go. And we'll leave that up for a moment or two so that everybody can um, get those access. Can we just confirm how long those surveys will be active? This is Nate um, Connor Associates. Um, yeah, they're they're going to be active until the twenty eighth, I believe. So after Thanksgiving. Thank you, Nate. We have a couple of raised hands. Perhaps people are, have questions about the survey itself. Okay. Um, Kelly Moore, I see your hand is raised. Did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Oh, sorry, I was trying to lower my hand. <laughs> okay. No comment. Thank you. Uh, Tom Kabowski, I see your hand is raised. Do you have a question about these surveys or the website? Yeah, how, do you, how do you get it to uh, open to be able to do the survey? I mean, I'm looking at the screen. How do I, how do I open it to uh, comment on the survey? So there's, there's two ways you can do it. Most phones, their video, their camera, if you put your camera up to the QR code, it'll recognize it as a QR code and bring up a link. The other way to access it is directly through the website. If you go to envisionhopper, okay. if you go to envisionhopper.com, there'll be links to the surveys. Okay, that, that's good. That's all I need, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Let me click on envisionhopper. No, you gotta, you gotta do it. All right, thank you everybody. We're gonna go ahead and end our meeting now. Have a great night.